highest unemployment rate since 2022. But now all they have to do is get to 4.0 from 3.9%. Yeah. And boom, the rate cut cycle is triggered. Yes. If we see a bunch of people drop out of the labor force, then the math is going to say, okay, we're going to go from 3.9% right. to 3.8% okay. on okay. the unemployment rate. Perfectly mm -hmm. feasible. Terrible mm -hmm. reason, but you would still have, you know, the labor secretary doing cartwheels on the White House lawn, making <laughs> it seem like it was a good thing because nobody yeah. understands the math. America's employers delivered another outpouring of jobs in March, adding a sizzling 303,000 workers to their payrolls and bolstering hopes that the economy can vanquish inflation without succumbing to a recession in the face of high interest rates. Average hourly earnings rose 0.3% in March as 12-month wage growth slipped to 4.1%. It was the 39th straight month of job growth and a much more significant gain than forecast. Private sector job gains have averaged 212,000 per month over the last three months, while overall hiring has averaged 276,000. The unemployment rate fell to 3.8% from 3.9% in February. Former Dallas Fed advisor Danielle DiMartino Booth emphasized that the Fed now anticipates a more robust employment situation in the United States, projecting the unemployment rate to reach 4.0% by 2024. This contrasts with their previous forecast of 4.1% in December. After the March jobs report, markets are pricing in 57% odds of a rate cut by the June 12th Fed meeting, down from 64% before the latest data, according to CME Group's Fed Watch page. The odds of a rate cut by the July 31st meeting stood at 76%, down from 80%. For all of 2024, markets are pricing in a year-end Fed funds rate of 4.7%, up from 4.66% ahead of the jobs report. That builds in 57.5% odds of at least three-quarter point rate cuts. However, Danielle emphasized a crucial point that many missed, the Federal Reserve's preparedness to cut interest rates. She noted that with the unemployment rate at 3.9%, the Fed has signaled its willingness to consider rate cuts, as evidenced by its decision to lower the threshold for initiating such cuts from 4.1% to 4.0%. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. What happened at the Fed, at the Fed's most recent meeting that yes. nobody paid attention to? Okay. I mean, it's like it's like we all walked out of the auditorium after seeing this spectacular lecture and everybody missed the punchline. And I'm what was like, the punchline? I'm like, dudes, did you not see that the Federal Reserve lowered the bar? It now it now thinks that the employment uh, situation in the United States is going to be so much healthier OK, if you're listening to this like on your ears instead of watching it, I just made air quotes so much healthier that it sees the unemployment rate ending 2024 at 4 percent, 4.0 percent. Now, in December, the last time that they did roll call at the FOMC meeting, they agreed that the at the time, December 14th, that the unemployment rate was going to end 2024 at 4.1 percent. Mm -hmm. And so. You know, you interpret this as saying the Fed thinks that the job market in 2024 is going to be stronger come March than it did last December. OK, but what is the other takeaway? People, the unemployment rate's 3.9 percent. The Federal Reserve is in rate cutting mode in one tenth of a percentage point because it lowered the threshold at which it's going to start cutting rates from 4.1% to 4.0%. Now, this was your takeaway. Did okay. anybody in the mainstream media pick up on this? <laughs> no. no. It's their job to not pick up yeah. on the important stuff. But the bottom line is, you are right. Highest unemployment rate since 2022 but now all they have to do is get to 4.0 from 3.9%. Yeah. And boom, the rate cut cycle is triggered. Yes. We saw the unemployment rate repressed, if you will, mm -hmm. in November and in December because more than 800,000 Americans dropped out of the workforce. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't tell you if yeah. a million people gave up looking for work 
in the month of March. I don't know. I won't know what, and that's why, you know, earlier in my institutional, my QI Pro Bloomberg chat room, earlier I said, the only thing that concerns us come Friday because the Fed has lowered the bar to 4% is what happens with the labor force participation rate. If we see a bunch of people drop out of the labor force, then the math is going to say, okay, we're going to go from 3.9% right. to 3.8% okay. on okay. the unemployment rate. Perfectly mm -hmm. feasible. Terrible mm -hmm. reason. Terrible reason. Because you'd have to have a lot of people drop out of the workforce. Right. Give it's up looking for work in order to bring the unemployment rate down, but you would still have, you know, the labor secretary doing cartwheels on the White House lawn, making <laughs> it seem like it was a good thing because nobody yeah. understands the math. The U.S. economy is flashing a recession warning that has only been wrong once in the last 120 years. Deutsche Bank no longer expects the U.S. economy to tip into recession this year, given cooling inflation and the labor market returning to a better balance without unemployment rising significantly. According to Bankrate's latest quarterly economists poll, the odds of the U.S. economy entering a recession within the next 12 months have now fallen to a two-year low of 33 percent. That's after soaring as high as 65 percent in the third quarter of 2022 and falling to about a coin flip by the final six months of 2023. According to Danielle, factors contributing to potential recessions include government job creation and recent dollar weakness, which has boosted U.S. exports. The U.S. dollar moved lower Wednesday, pressured by weaker-than-expected economic figures and dovish signals from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell. Now let's redirect our attention to a video. You know, things that feed recessions um, include those government jobs that, that you mentioned. Um, you know, there was some dollar weakness recently. Uh, so certainly our export engine picked up here in the United States. Uh, there's been a lot of production of things. We've built houses. Um, in fact, we've got more completed spec homes sitting there since 2010. Aged is economic output. Uh, you know, uh, dealers say that they have more cars on their dealer lots. In fact, more than they need. In fact, more than they've ever had. Uh, but those cars were produced. Uh, so we've definitely had production in the yeah. United States, there's been a heck of a lot of spending on infrastructure and anything that's ESG, EV, semiconductors. Mm -hmm. We want semiconductors to be produced here at home. That's a good thing. Um, but all of the other initiatives, you know, some of them have gone to pot. Some of them don't work. But there has been some semblance of pork barrel spending. Okay. Uh, you know, you've got apartments being completed at the fastest pace. As, as labor slack really comes alive in the construction market, right? Right now, if you're a construction worker you got more time on your hands than you used to. So um, so things have been produced more. Um, but no, I, I, I think that because of the depth and the persistence of the revisions that we've seen, you know, the Philadelphia Fed just came out yeah. and said, you know, there were 900,000 fewer jobs created uh, in the 12 months ended uh, March of 2023. So we keep seeing these really big yeah. revisions. So I think it's just gonna be a matter of time for the National yeah. Bureau of Economic Research to go back and incorporate all of these negative re revisions and, and say, you know what, the revision started in October of 2023 or in December of 2020, whatever it's going to be. I think when the dust settles on all these negative revisions, we're going to look back and say we were in recession. It's just right. the government's data crunchers. Yeah. Gotten all those revisions uh, reported yet. What I try so hard to convey to individuals is we're not seeing the manifestation in inflation, the way that we did in 2022 and in 2021, because we're not, we're not dropping helicopter money. We're not right. handing cash to people directly right. depositing it into their accounts, but we're doing a heck of a lot of pork barrel spending. But that means you've got to hire unionized workforces, wasteful, and you, you got to grease somebody's palm and bribe him or her and so um, pork barrel spending works its way through the economy in a much different way than handing money directly to people. Is it keeping us out of recession because the public is spending, you know, and the private sector is not? Of course, of course it is. But again, we still have, you know, a metric that we follow very closely 
backlogs. Backlogs are, uh, you know, future demand that orders that companies are sitting on that they're so busy they haven't been able to fulfill. Backlogs dictate demand for employment. Yet we still have backlogs that are deeply negative on both the manufacturing and services sides of the economy. That yeah. means that there's no pent up demand out there in the private sector. Four years after the pandemic curbed travel and forced shutdowns of restaurants, bars and entertainment venues, those industries have finally regained their pre-pandemic employment level with a category that includes such businesses adding 49,000 jobs in March. Also, the odds of a recession within the next 12 months have dropped sharply as the U.S. economy remains surprisingly resilient to higher interest rates and stubborn inflation. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.